Hey everybody, we are here for episode six of Versus Valerie, and this one is Peter Chow versus Valerie. Interestingly enough, originally titled FPS versus Valerie, and also Noobs versus Valerie. Also, it was it was uh, Owners versus Valerie at one time as well. Yeah, but we settled on Peter Chow because how could you not? Yeah, uh, that's the voice of Simon Fraser. This is my voice, mm-hmm. and this is the voice of Stephanie Callender. Go. Hi. Hi, it stopped. All right, good work. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, Peter Chow. Oh, and that's Mike that you heard off the top. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is Peter Chow versus Valerie. Let's do it. Dun, 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 dun. This was the first thing that we shot ever. Oh, yeah. yeah. We shot this actually in the summer. It's so funny because most of our series is supposed to take place mo- like relatively in the summer. And uh, this is actually the only stuff we shot in the summer. But it was supposed to be March. March to August. Uh, no, this was uh, or, episode six. Oh, right, this would have been like six. June or July. Oh, actually, that actually worked out. I was on our old schedule. It was supposed to be winter. And it was funny, too, because, you know, Adam and uh, Hannah had read all the scripts and they kind of knew what was going on. And... Uh, for them to get tossed into this one as the first episode, like the first thing we do is like put them in army fatigue, slow motion cameras, give them guns, have Hot them run day. around the field. Yeah, uh, it was lots of fun. And then Hannah had to like spurt up a giant blood bubble. After this, I think Hannah was like, "This is going to be the best way to spend the next couple weeks." <laughs> yeah. And it, we shot this as sort of uh, this is kind of our pilot episode in some ways, in that it's the first episode that we actually put together and we used this as a as a our demo essentially for the entire series it was the one episode that sort of told a, a single story well within the greater bo- within the body of the whole series and we knew we could shoot it over the course of one or two days and it had some action in it it had some pathos in it so, and yeah. it's uh... and it had a guest star and this episode uh, was written by Simon Fraser and Deb Robinson yeah it was a lot of fun to work with Deb Nice. And these are the guys from 3KB, um, who are awesome. That's uh, on the right hand, you have Jay, then Mike, and then Kat. And uh, 3KB, we rolled into the storyline early on in the vlogs uh, when fictional Val dated real person Jay Hooft for a little bit. And we uh, we, we uh, showed their relationship over two or three months in the vlogs and on all the social media stuff that we did. Uh, and Jay actually had to kind of explain that to his then actual real life yeah. girlfriend why he was fictionally dating this other girl uh, on the internet. That was very early. That was like February or March of 2011. Yeah, we had just started putting up videos, and um, and Jay and Mike found us because Jay was doing a contest thing on um, on 3KB about who's the sexiest, nerdiest girl or something, and they found us thinking that she was a real vlog instead of um, a fictionalized vlog, and so uh, I met with him and sort of gave him the whole scoop. <laughs> nice. And this uh, on the screen here is actually Davin Langell's uh, web series uh, called Brotherhood of Leet, which is all about like uh, the 8-bit video game wars. Yeah, it's like Band of Brothers yeah. meets 8-bit video games. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That was Mick Foley. The voice of. The voice of the, the announcer. Yeah. These did. were all kids who... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, that's it. I mean, just Mick Foley was doing a show at the Comedy Bar in Toronto, uh, and I asked him, uh, like, oh, hey, what are you doing now? And he's like, oh, me and my brothers, uh, buddies are going out for dinner. And I was like, well, tell you what, I'll uh, I'll buy you guys your dinner if you uh, do the voiceover for our episode of our show. And he's like, sure. So we took him into the back alley <laughs> of the Comedy Bar in Toronto and got him to deliver the lines that we needed, and uh, it was awesome. He was uh, excited about it, and he... I think he does a really good job of it. Mm-hmm. Peter Chow's, the team that Peter Chow is playing with, were all uh, members of this paintball club. Yeah, that Camp X paintball. Uh, these are all their, like, elite players that get together all the time and uh, and play on the course. That's all their own gear that they're wearing. Uh, and they all kind of decked out Peter Chow in their, like, highest end stuff, uh, which I thought was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we got a little bit of flack from the paintball community for not using full face masks on everybody. Um, and we talked about it uh, on our writing side of it. And um, I was like, we should use full face masks. And then uh, Steph brought up the community episodes uh, that are the paintball episodes. And uh, I was like, yeah, you're right. You know what? If we're not wearing full face masks... You then... can actually see them emote. Yeah. So <laughs> we, uh, we went for it. So the owners are actually using their real gear, except for Peter Chow is wearing just his glasses. And then our team are in these clear glasses, so you can actually see their faces. 
You gotta see their face. Yeah, otherwise it's it more would just important. be a bunch of subtitles. <laughs> right, it would just be Power Rangers yeah. as a comedy. For sure, Steph was the smart one in that <laughs> in that moment. But I get it. We want to go legit because for any fan who's watching, we know that they're going to notice those type of inaccuracies for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we want to make sure our fans are happy. This is true. We Yeah, we tried to do that whenever we could, like just to make sure everything was like true to the source material we were referencing or true to... Uh, like the details, we do that all the time in the vlogs. Like we, we don't try not to make things just a surface connection because we're all nerds and we all love the things we write about. So it becomes one of those things where we want to make sure it's as real and as true to that stuff as possible, while still retaining a truth for the character. Yeah, absolutely. What you're seeing now of, of uh, someone talking to their friend, for instance, about another friend is super real. That happens all the time. <laughs> it does. Like, val trying to set up your friend with someone, it's tough work. You got to get in there. got to be subtle about it. You're a regular day, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nice. And this shot was fun because uh, we uh, we had a steady cam for a bit, so uh, oh, it, was, that's right. it was fun for Brett. And although it was very hot out that yeah. day, and like Toronto gets crazy humid, uh, so like not this only was, was August. It, this was August, and it's like thirty degrees out, but it's also like you know ninety five percent humidity. Yeah. So uh, like there were moments where people were sweating through their overalls. And we're in the forest. There's bugs everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can hear the cicadas every once in a while. Who were having one of their cicada mating frenzies yeah and this is another full day of shooting uh i mean we had to stop because of daylight at a certain point yes but we shot right up until like it was starting to get dark indeed and then afterwards the crew went out and shot each other with paintballs which was kind of fun uh, <laughs> i love these two kids on the right they're like the most dangerous guys on the field <laughs> <laughs> they're small and nimble right yeah yeah, and they have nothing, they have no, no life experience, so they have nothing to lose. Right. <laughs> exactly. No shame. <laughs> nice. And uh, Peter Chow is awesome. He's hilarious and was totally committed to doing this show. I mean, it, it's one of those things when you invite people to your set and uh, you never know, like, if they're going to bring their A-game. And he for sure brought his A-game. He was really excited to come out to Toronto and do this with us. Uh, and he was really fun to work with. And he brought a variety of sunglasses for us yes. to choose which one. That's right, too. He brought, like, three or four. Yeah, there's only a couple times that you can actually see the crew in the reflection of his glasses. We tried really hard to make that there work we out. Yeah. We were there a second yeah, ago. Yeah, briefly. And then there's another shot, too, when uh, Val is about to make her her boob known uh, oh, that you that's can right. see. <laughs> make her boob known. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Known in the biblical sense. Yes, of course. And we got a lot of flack on, on that one, too. There were a lot of people who were like, Val should never have done that. That steps on her morals. Uh, she, she had should. to. But it was one of those things where we were like, uh, you know, Val is okay with things. Uh, she's okay with her body. She's okay with, uh, with you know, talking about sex and doing the sex stuff. And so she knew that that would be an easy leverage point for Peter Chow's character. Also, Guy doesn't know that she did that. This That's something I pointed out to somebody in a comment, that Guy does not know that she did that. And that might come back to haunt them in a future episode. Oh, you maybe. never know. You never know. Nice. And he's such a, like, just a pure prick in that oh, moment. Oh, he's so good at being a prick. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Yeah. Butthole fingering? Was that you, Steph? Yeah. <laughs> Unsolicited. <laughs> Unsolicited butthole fingering. Yeah. Now that, that corner is not the same corner. Now we're down the wall further. I love that. Yeah, this, I mean, this didn't bother me, this, her showing her boob, because to someone who's really comfortable with their body, like, a boob... You know, why is it any different than a peck or, you know, uh, your arm? It's just, it, you know, if you if you take away the power from it, then it's it's no big deal to her right. to do this. It might be a big deal to him, but it doesn't like her. We had to go cup shopping for Peter Chow, too. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Uh, yeah, and uh, actually, we called him and we're like, hey, um, we're going to shoot you in the balls with a paintball gun, so do you want to go buy a cup or do you want us to? What size are you? And, he's <laughs> and then he sent an email back that said, I'll get one, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we shot this sequence like four or five times uh, of Brett wearing the uh, the Steadicam vest. And it's like a three minute shot if you oh, let it yeah. play to its entirety. So it, it definitely was something oh, I that was... I remember calling out cues to these actors. I remember this was such a technical shot. Yeah. And it's fun, like, I like it with this track, it, you kind of get that, it, like, it's not quite FPS exactly, but it, like, kind of captures the spirit of paintball as much as it captures the spirit of an FPS game. Who did this uh, music? 
This is Prono Bozo as well. This um, is one of his tracks. I love this track. I too. love the sunglasses in the top left corner. Like that's her her helmet is the sunglasses. Yeah, it's it's her. her uh, it's like a power special upgrade. power. Yeah, that's another thing that I like about incorporating Peter Chow is one of the things that he has is you never see him without a sunglasses. You never see his eyes, uh, and we use that so that you never see his eyes in this episode. There's a, occasionally a moment where you might have seen his eyes, but you didn't because we cut too soon or too late for you to see his eyes. Yeah. And I love that that line there that Adam improvised too of the like the, the place you least expect me behind barrels. It's yeah. just it's so flat and it's so whatever. It's very guy, very funny. Uh, and this shot here is interesting too because um, it was very late in the day, so the yeah. shadows were getting pretty long on Val. Uh, so it was actually kind of hard to get this effect where Peter Chow uh, walks over and his shadow kind of covers her face after this little aside. We meant that was to improvised too, the gelato lines. Yeah, that was a good improvised line because it called back to the teaser uh, where she oh, says, right. go for gelato. Nice. So I thought that was really good. And then this is a classic thing you see in uh, FPS games. Oh, yeah, obviously. Uh, the stealing of sunglasses. Or the, <laughs> no, the teabagging. <laughs> teabagging the dead body. <laughs> yeah. When we were at Fan Expo, we had this, uh, we had like a little show reel cut uh, on a loop so that people could see it. And when we were at VidCon, too. Uh, and uh, that was one of the shots that would come up, and you'd get all these guys walking by, and they would stop, and they would look at the teabagging going on, and then they'd be like, uh huh. And they would grab a, a flyer and then walk away. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the selling point for them. <laughs> oh, there's tea banking in there's this tea show. Okay, oh, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I loved it. Very fun. Yeah, my favorite part in the script, Simon, that uh, you would, that you you put in there was um, that Val get the Val the Peter Chow vision when she puts on the sunglasses. Yeah. I love that she's got it's a whole another set of vision. It's like a great fantasy example. Yeah, it's like his sunglasses are the character. Yeah. So she becomes a little bit of Peter Chow when she puts them on. Yeah, she turns into a jerk. Shoots and shoots everybody except except, her. except the two guys playing ball tag. Yeah. <laughs> Which is too bad because in the final cut it's not as clear, but. Uh, every take that we did, it was always like Jay and Mike actually playing ball tag. Like yeah. They knew they had to like pretend to play ball tag. Right. But they were legitimately... I think, I think they got each other a few times. Yeah, there was one there where they both ended up falling at the same time, uh, <laughs> groaning. <laughs> and then when we got back, uh, Mike was like, whoa, you really got me good that one. <laughs> we're like, oh no, that sucks. Going again. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was a fun day though. We had a yeah. great crew. Uh, I think we actually had Nabil out that day as well. Um, it was his jib that we used in the teaser shot to get that kind of like classic camera rising above a guy while he's holding Val's yeah. uh, dead corpse. And it was uh, it was an awesome thing too because we knew we wanted that shot and then the first shot on the jib as well. So Nabil opened it up and it turns out that he had lent it to somebody the day before and they return it and Nabil was like make sure you break it down afterwards and the guy had literally broken it down to every nut and bolt so he'd taken the Ooh. whole thing apart and I just remember Nabil's face as he opened the bag and then he went to like kind of take it out of the bag and everything oh, just tore right on the ground. I remember, and we I remember like, be, there being a delay on that first shot. Yeah we had right. to wait for almost two and a half hours for them to build the Right. Jib. So we went and shot everything else that we could while Porna Bill was in the middle of the in the hot summer sunshine trying to like build this intricate device that can, you know, can't make, make, make a can't make a camera rise four feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it worked out and uh, I think it looked really nice in the end. Yeah, that teaser it looks really awesome and it's uh it's definitely was was a great way to start shooting this season. Yeah. You guys stick around for episode seven. There's zombies and there's also Kaya Green. She's back. Here, give them a little hint of what you'll sound like in episode 7. I'm going to sound like this, probably. That's Kaya. She's going to be in the next episode. Check it out. I'm going to hear it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> spooky. Real spooky. 